we can look at some uncertainty in measurement. So we're going to look at exact numbers and inexact numbers. And exact numbers are things that you can count. So you know there are exactly 12 eggs in a dozen. Um, they're things that you can count or things that have um, a definition, some kind of defined quantity. Like there are exactly um, 1,000 1, grams in one kilogram. That's an exact number because we define it to be that way. Inexact numbers are things that have some amount of uncertainty in them. They usually come from measurement. So any measured quantity is going to be an inexact number. And this is going to be important when we're trying to figure out the total number of significant figures. So when you're doing a calculation, you need to know like how many of those numbers actually matter. Um, inexact numbers are, are going to really determine how well you know your final answer. So those measurements are going to limit how well you know your final answer. Exact numbers are not going to play into the number of significant figures. They're going to have an infinite number of significant figures. So they won't limit how well you know your final answer. All right, so let's just do this quick one. You know, are these exact numbers or inexact numbers? So the number of people in your chemistry class. Um, you can count that number. So that's going to be exact. Uh, the mass of a penny. This is a measurement. So this would be an inexact number. And then the number of grams in a kilogram. Well, that was a, I already gave you that example. <laughs> so that's an exact number as well. They're exactly a thousand grams in a kilogram. Um, accuracy and precision. Uh, your first lab, you're gonna talk about this as well. Uh, in addition to den density, you're gonna look at you know, accuracy and precision in, in different um, measurements. And accuracy is really, you know, how how close to the real value are you going to get? So if you were playing um, darts, right? So you have darts like this, you have this bullseye. Um, accuracy, you know, this would be a really accurate measurement, right? If you got uh, really close to the bullseye. Um, precision is how close to different measurements get to each other. So, you know, this is very precise, right? If you did three, if you got three really close over here, very precise, but it's not very accurate if you were going for um, the bullseye. So something like, you know, whoop, there we go, something like this is not very accurate and it's not very precise. Like precision is getting all those X's really close together, accurate is getting them really close to um, the center. So accuracy is how, you know, the proximity of the measurement to the true value, or in this case, you know, the, where you're your desired value, trying to get into the middle. Um, precision is how close are those measurements to each other. So this one down here is not very accurate, not very precise. This one is accurate and precise. This one is very precise, um, but not very accurate. And different measuring devices have different uses, uses and different degrees of, of accuracy. So uh, when we're looking at significant figures, um, we need to look at you know, there's some rules that we have to follow. So rules generally come from the placement of the zeros, where the zeros are located. And so here are your four rules in terms of uh, what to do with these zeros. So if you have a measurement and you have no zeros in it, um, all the non-zero digits are significant. So if I put something on the balance and it was uh, 1,435 kilograms, this would have four significant figures because I have four digits right there. Uh, if you have zero, so if you have zeros between two non-zero digits, then they are significant. So if they're kind of like sandwiched between two uh, non-zero digits, then this uh, they'd all be significant. So I, the one, and the zero, and the zero, and the five, all four of those numbers are significant. So I'd have four significant figures there. Just think if they're sandwiched between, that's good. Everyone loves sandwiches. Sandwiches are good. The zeros at the beginning of a number are never significant, no matter what. If there's a decimal pl place present there, it, it doesn't matter. So you start counting your significant figures at the first non-zero digit. So this guy only has one significant figure. Um, you can rewrite this in scientific notation, right? So you can say this is you know, 2 times 10 to the what, 1, 2, 3, 4, negative 4. Um, and then all those zeros disappear. So the beginning zeros never matter. Just like when you go to a concert, those first bands, they never, they never matter. Those are the crappy ones. Um, what you're really waiting for is the zeros at the end, right? The bands at the end when they play at a concert. So these initial zeros are not significant. Uh, start counting your sig figs at the first non-zero digit. The zeros at the end 
um, are significant as long as there's a decimal point present there. So in this case, you have, so here you have um, one, two, three, four significant figures as well. So all the zeros are significant because there's a decimal point present there. If you just had you know, 200 like that, then you'd only have one sig fig, right? one sig fig there because there's no decimal point present. If you put a decimal point there, now you have three sig figs. So you need to pay attention to um, those n zeros. So if there are no zeros present, then everything's significant. If you have zeros sandwiched in between two non-zero digits, then it's significant. If you have zeros in the beginning, then they're not. Those zeros are not significant, then don't count them. You start counting at the first non-zero digit. And if you have zeros at the end, they are significant if there's a decimal point present. So take a second to try to answer these questions, to do these, and see what you get. So you can pause the video. It's okay to pause the video. All right. Welcome back. So here you have um, those zeros are sandwiched in between two non-zero digits. So you have four sig figs here. Um, here you have 6.023 times 10 to the 23. Don't worry about the times 10 to the 23. That's just telling you how many zeros you're adding on at the end. Um, they're not listed there, so they're not significant. So all you have to worry about is this first part. And that has one zero in it, which is sandwiched in between two non-zero digits. So that one also has four sig figs. And this last one, there's no decimal point present, so you only have one sig fig because those zeros are not significant. If you put a decimal point at the end of that, then you then those zeros would be significant. All right. Um, so the least certain measurement uh, limits the certainty of a calculated quantity. So now we're going to start looking at um, how do sig figs play out when you're start when you're starting to calculate things. And it depends on if you are adding and subtracting or multiplying and dividing. So if you're adding and subtracting, what you want to do is kind of line up your, your, your decimal points. Uh, and so let's see. So if I had 200.1 and I want to add that to like 1.23, normally what you would do is you would add this up, right? You can say this is a 201.33. But how well do we know this number? Um, we don't know it really well at all because we don't know what this number and it's not that that number was zero because if we measured this quantity, remember these are measured quantities so I put this on the balance and one balance says this is 200.1 and the other balance says this is 1.23 the, the first number that's not even being registered on the balance I don't know what that is that's a, that's a question mark it could be 9 it could be 0 I'm just not able to measure it, measure it. so because I can't measure this um, this decimal place here, I don't know what it is in this final answer. So this is where my uncertainty lies. So I only know this final answer up to how well I know these, these, decimal, these um, digits here. So my final answer is 201.3. Uh, if this number was 5 or greater, then I would, I would round up, round this 3 up to 4. Uh, but since I don't know what that is, this is fine. And then usually you'd have some kind of units, so maybe these are all in grams since we were talking about putting this in a balance. Um, we want to make sure we have units on here. So when you're adding and subtracting, you have to look at the um, least number of um, significant figures. They're determined by the, the least significant decimal place. So line up your decimals and then kind of cross out where you don't know the answer. So I don't know what this one is, so I don't know what this final answer is, um, that final decimal place there. When you're multiplying and dividing, then you want to look at the total number of um, digits, significant figures in each number, and then take the smaller one. So whoever has the least number of sig figs is going to, um, that's how many you'll have in your final answer. So if I had something like 5.0, and I'm multiplying that by 201, right, and I get my, my answer here of 1,005. Okay, so let's look at number of sig figs. How many sig figs does this number have? Is that zero significant? Yes, because there's a decimal point present. Um, and this guy has three sig figs. The zero is significant because it's sandwiched in between two non-zero digits. So then you look at two and you look at three and you say, all right, which number is smaller? Two is smaller. So I'm gonna round this number to two sig figs. So first I'm gonna put it in scientific notation, 1.005 times 10 to the three. And then I'm gonna cut it down to two sig figs, which is just gonna be 1.0 times 10 to the 3 and suppose this is I don't know I suppose this is meters in meters and this thing would be like meters squared 
something like that. Have some kind of units on there. Um, but the point here is the number of sig figs. So I have two and three, so my final answer needs to have two. This zero is significant because there's a decimal point present. So now let's look at rounding. Really quick, rounding is, you know, you've probably done this before. If you had something like 6.75 and you wanted to go to two sig figs, uh, you would raise this one up to 6.8. Look at the number um, next to where you want to round. So if I only want two sig figs, I know the 6.7 is good. Then I look at the digit right next to it, and if it's five or greater, I'd round it up. So that has two sig figs. If you had something like 2.33 and you want to go to two sig figs, one, two, then you look at this one, and since it's less than five, I would just get 2.3. Um, if you had, you know, I think you 5.21, round that one up to two sig figs, 5.2, and then 9.89. If you wanted to round that to two, to two sig figs, you go one, two, you look at this guy, round it up uh, to 9.9. .9. So rounding, not too difficult. Um, just look at the digit right next to it, to where you want to go. And if it's five or greater, then oh, round up. Our last problem here, um, is a series of calculations and then so what are you going to do if you have more than one step in a calculation uh, don't round at each step keep at least one non-significant figure that's your guard digit and then you can round at the very end so in this problem we have a gas at 25 degrees Celsius uh, fills a container whose volume is this okay so we have a volume the container has a mass of that and the container when emptied of all gas has a mass of this uh, what is the density of the gas? All right, so the density, again, we're doing a density problem. So um, density is mass over volume. And if you just looked at these numbers without really reading any, anything, you get volume and you have two masses. And so you have to figure out which what mass are you really talking about. So the container plus uh, the gas has this mass, right, the bigger one. And then this is what the mass of just the container is. So if you needed to figure out what the mass of the gas is, you would subtract them. So mass of the gas, let's find that first, because density, we want to find the density of the gas, which is the mass of the gas over the volume of the gas. So the mass of the gas, I'm, I'm starting off here with the 837.6 minus 836.2. All right, I'm gonna, this is subtraction, so I'm gonna line up my decimal places. They both have you know, one, one figure after the decimal, I end up with 1.4. Grams. So I went from four sig figs down to two, and that happens. Sometimes you lose your sig figs. This is just, um, it is what happens when you're subtracting. So I get 1.4 grams. That's my first step there. And then if I want to find the density, my density is 1.4 grams divided by the volume, which is 1.05 times 10 to the 3 centimeters cubed. And when I work all that out, I get... 1.3 times 10 to the negative 3 grams per centimeter cubed. Um, so we actually get like 1.33333, whatever, well, lots of threes on here, um, times 10 to the negative 3. Now let's look at the number of sig figs. I have 2 here, and I have 3 over there. So the final answer should have two sig figs, so you want 1.3 times 10 to the negative 3 grams per centimeter cubed. So make sure you work out a couple problems like that uh, for homework.